Guitar practice session 11524. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap. Hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help to verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others learning a similar thing, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the types of things that I'm doing here. I do think that presenting the information as though someone's listening, even if no one is, is useful because it helps us to verbalize things in ways we otherwise possibly would not when we're just like, who cares? It's just that me person who's trying to learn this stuff. I don't need to like get it down into any organization as if it's somebody else. It's like, well, now I have to kind of actually think about it because it's for somebody else. So now I got to break it down. So if you want to take this information and try to make your own presentations with it or something like that, we'll try to provide it, including the Excel worksheet. Uh, and don't worry about plagiarism or anything. You can do whatever you want with it. But It'll be organized from the perspective of us behind the guitar so that if I place the guitar on the string on the screen strings first, we have the low or heavy string on top, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation as us behind the guitar. I will flip my guitar around so it looks like I'm left handed. So what I'm playing on the screen will match up to what is on our worksheet, which will match up to what is on possibly your worksheet if you download it and what uh, your perspective is from behind the guitar. So I'm going to start off by looking at the ninth again. So we're in the minor uh, key and then we're looking at the ninth once again. This time our same strategy is we would like to find every s note on the fretboard thinking of it as the first and be able to find every ninth interval from it. Strategy being we pick the middle note somewhere on fret five is what we've basically been working on. And then we pick every note thinking of it as the root and looking at every relative ninth to it. And uh, then those shapes will all be moverable. So in theory, we would be able to find the ninth quickly by shape anywhere on the fretboard. We first then go into uh, the, the, the overarching objective uh, uh, of learning this information. And to do that, we go on over to the, uh, what did I call it? The related uh, modes tab. Just to give a recap before we get into the weeds of the overarching objective so we can stay kind of motivated as well as have kind of like uh, what we're trying to do, the end goal in mind, so our mind can kind of connect these things together as we dive into basically the weeds. So the general overview that we go into is we want to learn, you know, the major scale. We want to learn all of the relative positions within it, not really focusing in on the notes, but rather the relative positions because our focus is on movable shapes that I can apply to different modes, then be able to, to take any of those relative positions, make a chord from it, and then be able to look from the perspective of any other mode and also be able to create a chord from any relative positions from any other mode, possibly using the key of C as kind of our Rosetta Stone, noting that we're then going to go down to the Aeolian mode, otherwise known as the minor scale, which we often think of as something different than modes, like with the major scale, but it's really a mode and we can compare it to the major scale, but also possibly want to learn it you know, memorize its intervals itself. And once we learn these intervals, we can make a comparison to the other major modes, the Ionian and Dorian. And I want to kind of keep emphasizing in my mind the difference and the similarities between what a chord creation is and what a mode is. They're basically the same kind of things and, and learn it in a way that I can apply it, you know, as easily as possible when I'm trying to go through the 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 process of making music or just noodling around or whatever I want to do with it. So then if I go back on uh, over here, we're going to then go through our process of looking at the ninth, noting that the ninth is equivalent to the, uh, the second for the most part for our purposes here. And we talk a little bit about that. And uh, then as we find our related shapes on the second two strings, because we did the top two last time, we'll also try to build a chord and then add the ninth. If we need to drop something, we'll drop the fifth. 
and then if we if we have to we'll drop the third and we'll think about kind of chord creations in a little bit more depth as we do that i do tell a joke as well it's the the election is today uh for uh the united states election so i'm still kind of doing the political jokes i'm trying to end off the jokes that i've written for that so it's kind of a little bit longer of a joke and kind of piece together jokes it's kind of like uh, the Greg Gutfield, uh, 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 what does he call it? The leftovers on Friday. <laughs> There's the leftovers, right? But I thought that, so that's that. And then, you know, so, and then I do that. And then at the end, I talk about, uh, uh, I try to basically go back on over here and think of myself in the, 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 the minor key. And then I choose the, this is my list of all combinations of of uh, relative positions or three numbers out of seven, right? So it's randomly putting together like a song with just three chords in it so that I can randomly put those chords together because this is one of the problems I think people have is that they, they try to make up a song by just kind of like thinking, I'm just going to randomly pick three notes and then I'm, or four notes or whatever I'm going to do and make a, make a song from it. But really you, it might be easier if you actually mapped out all the combinations of three or four chords and then, you know, and then test some of them out. So that's what this worksheet is doing. And I can do that with any mode by just looking at all combinations because I'm going to look at relative positions for all the modes. In this case, the mode of the minor mode. And we picked, I picked a one, three, four progression. And then if I say it's a one, three, four in a minor key as opposed to a major key, it's it just has a different scrambling of the of the numbers because I'm looking at the relative positions for the minor. So then I look at that one three four and try to try to play that multiple ways and experiment with what if I went from the one uh, to the three uh, to to in particular this four and I thought of them as basically major or minor scales only. In other words, I'm in the Aeolian for the one, of course and then Ionian, which is the major scale for the three. But for the four, I have an option of thinking of it as the Aeolian D, which would be a minor chord for a triad, or the Dorian D, which still would have a minor triad, but has a different interval than the Aeolian, right? And then I, I also kind of just want to experiment more with, well, how long can I kind of hang on and noodle around, around the A, and then go to like the D or the C before my mind says, hey, look, I'm not really in the key of A minor anymore. Now I'm in the key of C major, right? So then, and what would that do, right? What like if you're trying to play a song or something, could you, sw could you hang on to the C long enough to switch it to the C and then kind of go back to the A and then hang on to the Dorian long enough. So it, now it kind of sounds like you're in Dorian, which should be fine. It shouldn't be too shocking to the ear because they're related modes. But then you can kind of switch back and forth and spend more time, you know, and and try to switch like switch to another mode by, by saying, well, how long do I have to be on it to switch to that mode? And what would that do? Or how can I use that, you know, musically or whatever? So I kind of play with that. Today, we're continuing on with the minor scale, otherwise known as mode number six, the Aeolian mode, once again, looking at the ninth interval, but this time looking at it with regards to the middle two strings in the guitar, because we did yesterday the top two strings. The idea being, I'd like to be able to choose any note on the guitar, considering it as my root note, and look at all possible ninths that are related to it, in this case, the major ninth, even though I'm in a minor mode, which we'll discuss more shortly. But the strategy for doing that is to pick something in the middle of the guitar, like on the fifth fret, and choose uh, it as the root note and look at every ninth compared to each string on that fret. And so if I start on this note, there's only going to be six possible ninths that I can reach for all practical purposes within a 12 fret span, one per string. And then if I do that for each of the strings, in theory then, once I have the shape down, if I choose any other note on the fretboard, as long as I'm on the same string, the shape will be the same. It'll be similar to copying and pasting on an Excel worksheet where all of the relative references will basically be the same. So that's going to be our strategy that we're going to be continuing on with. Before we do, however, I want to give a quick recap as or before we get into the weeds here, 
the overarching project that I just want to keep on reiterating in my mind. To do that, I'm going to go to the Related Modes tab, remembering the idea is that we compare everything to the, to the major scale, and that's going to be the Ionian mode. The scale is the same thing as a mode. We're now on the minor scale, which we often think of as superior or something different than a mode, but it's really just another mode. It it's, uh, can be compared to the major scale, the major scale being an Ionian mode, the minor scale being the Aeolian mode. So the minor scale is, a, is the next example of us wanting to step away from just looking at things from one perspective, the major scale, meaning it's all the same notes if we're looking at the relative minor, but I wanna reposition everything from that perspective as though it is the root, and I come up with, of course, a whole different range of music uh, that, we, that we come up with. And the same could be true then, if you think about it, of course, for every other mode, because I could start on any other note and just look at it from that angle. And if we look at a seven scaled, uh, int uh, seven notes in a scale, then we have seven modes that we can do. So what I'd like to be able to do then is learn the major scale as our kind of point of reference. And that means that we've got seven relative positions out of 12. It's useful to learn them in the key of C. That's kind of traditional for Western music because there's no sharps and flats, which acts as a nice check figure, uh, especially when you're building Excel worksheets to see that nothing's out of place. But in theory, all the things you learn here are movable on the guitar. So we're trying to learn it in a way that we can move everything around with the relative positions rather than just memorizing uh, the notes. And then we have the, the relative positions, which can I build a major chord and minor chord from? Many times we just start to learn on the major scale, the one, four, five, the bluesy kind of progression are the majors. So I can make a major triad from them, major triad being defined as having a four note away major third, and the two, three, and six then are the minor chords. I can build a minor triad defined as having a minor third. We build these simply by picking every other note in the scale. So when I, when I build the, the, C, the, the C here, the Ionian or a major chord, if I start on the one, I skip every other note, I get an E, I skip every other note, I get a G. So I get the one, three, five. If I started on the D of the major scale and I skipped every other note, I'd get an F, I'd get an A. So that's why I get the D, F, A, which just happens to have a minor third in it as opposed to a major third, which is why it creates a minor chord as opposed to a major chord. So that means that when I build these out this way, I'm really just building the same notes out in a different order, which is what we call a mode. So that's going to be the Dorian mode if I start on the two. So all of these modes are related. I can look at everything from the perspective of the second, but it's useful to renumber it like with the Aeolian mode, making it the first and thinking of it as a Dorian mode, right? So that's, so that's uh, what we would like to be able to see that relation. I want to be able to see that relationship better. And how can I do that? Well, if I go down to like, the Lydian down here mode and I want to think about can I build a chord off of the Lydian note mode all the notes are the same but I might not know which ones I can build a chord from based on the relative positions because it's not the one four five being major anymore because it's shuffled around the relative positions even though the notes are the same so if I know I'm in the key of C then I probably have memorized which ones are going to be major and minor just on the notes but that's not movable. What is movable is the relative positions. So one way I can do this is give an absolute mode number based on the, the C scale. So the Lydian, for example, is the fourth. So I can see that it's, it's the fourth mode, and that means that it's three steps down from the position one. So if I'm in the major scale, it takes one, two, three steps. So what I can do is say, I'm going to give an absolute number four based on the relative position to the major scale of the mode. Minus one gives me the number of steps, which is three. And then if I want to figure out like what this fifth item is, it would be five plus three, uh, which is eight, because there's only seven modes. I have to say eight minus seven, because it goes around in a circle, is one, which gives me the Ionian. 
So that's so that's one way I can basically tie these things out. So I can I can then play in other modes, and of course we can do the same thing for the minor mode, which we're doing here. Now on the minor mode, because it's so special, uh, it's the second most special mode in Western music, possibly. We possibly just want to memorize the relative positions and the modes related to it, like we do with the major, which we can do fairly easily once we know the major, because we can just take the intervals of the major and convert them to the minor modes, except for the one that we're on here, which is the second. So in other words, in the major scale, I have a perfect first, a two note away, major second, a three note away, I'm sorry, a four note on the third, it's a four note away, major third. On the fourth, it's a five note away, perfect fourth. On the fifth, it's a seven note away, perfect fifth. On the sixth, nine note away, major six. On the seventh, it's 11 note away, major seven. When we go to the Aeolian, we, which, is, which is the minor scale, the first is still a perfect first. The second is the Locrian one, that's the weird one. So we have to remember, instead of the seventh being the weird one, it's the second. And then the third is a three note away minor third, which means we flap the third instead of a four note away major third. The fourth is still a five note away perfect fourths. The perfects will remain the second. By the way, the second is the one that has the two note away major second, which didn't change even though it's a major and not a perfect. The fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth. The sixth is an eight note away uh, minor sixth instead of a nine note away major sixth. The seventh is a 10 note away minor seven instead of an 11 note away major seven. So that will help me to learn the triads. I can also memorize that the one, four, five, the blues progression works in the minor as well, because that's gonna give me all the minors. I get the one Aeolian, the four is the Dorian, and the five is the Phrygian. So in minor blues, I can just play the one, four, five still. However, it's not the two, three, six that are the majors, because the two's the funny one, Therefore, it's got to be the three and then not the four and the five, the six and the seven. So on the minor, the way we can kind of memorize if we make a major or minor triad based on the relative positions is we can still use our math. I could say, well, the minor is the Aeolian mode. And if I'm looking for like the fourth of the minor, I can take take mode number six compared to the major key. Minus one gives me five plus what did I say? Four. I want to look at the fourth. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine minus seven is two. That gives me relative position two compared to the major scale. And I know I make a minor chord relative to the major scale on the two, three, and six. But beyond that, I also know it's the Dorian mode. Knowing the mode allows me to, to go beyond just the third, the triads out into the, the seven, nine, 11, and 13. And so that's what I want to be able to do. So I want to, and so notice I want to be able to do this kind of two different ways. If I'm on the minor scale, I'd like to be able to play symmetrically, meaning I play like an A minor shuffle or something, and then I go to the D Dorian or D. No, then I go to the D D minor. And then I go back to the A, and then I go to the to the to the E minor or A O, right? I could do that, but that basically means that instead of going to the one four five, I'm going to the one, and then the four. I'm playing the the it as a Aeolian four, a minor scale four, and the five. I'm playing the E as a minor scale four, or I can play in the same key, which means that I'm going to play in Dorian and then in Phrygian. And so that and 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 so that to do that, there's going to be one interval difference when I build my scales. So when I'm doing my shuffle pattern down here on D, I can't do everything completely parallel because there's going to be one note that's different, which happens to be this note right here when I'm looking. At so that's going to give me a sound that's a little bit different, doesn't sound quite as symmetrical but it does sound like it's in the same key, which is a different kind of flavor. So how can, I, how can I know to do that? Well, I can memorize the intervals just like we did with the major. I memorize the minor intervals as kind of like my baseline intervals, and, I can, and those are basically right here, and I can look at them 
as they're compared to the major intervals. And once I have those down, then I can look at the two uh, other minor modes, which are the Dorian and Phrygian, which will have one interval difference. So we'll talk about that more later. All right, so that's going to be the strategy. Right now, we're on uh, the 9th. So the other confusing thing is the 9, 11, and 13 represent the 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 every other skipping a note format, chord creation format of building a chord. So we go from the 1 to the 3 to the 5. So the 1, the 3, and the 5. But then we go to the 7. There's nothing after the 7. So how do I get a 9? Because the 9, for, for our purposes, is equivalent to the 2 because I'm not thinking about octaves. I'm thinking about it in a circle. So the 9 is basically the 9, 11, and 13 are the even notes to complete the seven note scale. So we have the nine is equivalent to two, the 11 is equivalent to the four, and the 13 is equivalent to the six. So we're working on the nine right now of a minor, which is equivalent to the two, which you would think would be a minor second as opposed to one note away minor as opposed to the major, which was a two note away major second, but it's not. This is the funny one because the main minor scale, the minor mode, has a major second in it. The one, there is one that does have a minor second, and that's the Phrygian. So the Phrygian is actually, again, more minor than the main minor. So the main, so the main minor, the Aeolian, is actually not as hardcore minor as the Phrygian, because it still has a major interval in it, where the Phrygian is like, dude, I'm really the, I'm really the minor th thing here, but it's too heavy, so we don't like... I, most people play the minor, I don't know, it could be, that's what my, that's what I'm telling my, that's the story I have in my head at least. So that means that we're looking at the ninth here, which is a, a major second, which means it's the same interval that we learned on the major scales for the second uh, and, or the ninth, right? The second or the ninth are going to be the two note away second or the two note away uh, ninth. And uh, it will be the same on the minors for the 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 aeolian and then the dorian but as we said not for the phrygian so when we learn this interval we can say hey look this second is going to be the same in relation to all of the majors as well which which is the ionian the lydian the mixolydian and it's the same for aeolian on the minor and dorian but not for the phrygian so when i'm in the minors it's the major second two note away major second for the one and the four, but not for the five. All right, keeping that in mind, we'll just go through these two uh, over here. So same strategy. I'm gonna be picking something in the middle of the guitar. I think we were on the G that last time. And then I, and then I uh, stopped. So we're like right here, let's do, let's do this one. And so our strategy is to say, okay, I'm gonna pick this middle and then I'm gonna look at all possible ninths and as I pick up that ninth, I'm also going to say, can I build a chord with it? I'd like to build a chord with a one, three, five and the nine. But if I can't get a one, three, five, I'll drop the five first. And if I can't get the do that, I'll drop the three. Now, note that you also might want to put the seven in there, too, because oftentimes when we say there's a ninth, we think of it as building upwards with a one, three, five, seven and nine. I'm not going to get too deep into the into the seventh. I might grab one here and there, but I'm not going to look at it kind of specifically. I'm going to just say these three notes and then try to grab the nine uh, and see if we can do that. Okay, so I'm on the G here. So if I go above the G, then I can go above it like this. So when I go above it, so we're looking at the ninth, which is a uh, a equivalent to the second. Ninth is equivalent to the second. So that means it's a two note away major ninth or a two note away major second. So if I'm on the G that uh, and I'm going above it, I have to look at the inverse between these two because I'm going above it. So the distance between them is going to be the inverse. So it's going to be 10 minus uh, 10, 12 minus two, which is 10. So if I count that out, this is five from here to here is negative five. I would say six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there we have it from here all the way out to there. It, wouldn't, it would not be quite a stretch. It's on the nut. 
so it's going to be way out there so i'm going to i'm going to note it but i'm not going to do much with it because it's way out there note that it that i could use that open string obviously and uh as the as the a that's cool but you can't really move that that's not a movable shape and i'm kind of focused on my movable shapes that i can finger so let's go to the one above it so once again i'm looking for the inverse with of the inverse of the two note away major ninth otherwise known as the two note away major second and it's major even though i'm in the minor scale because the minor scale aeolian mode number six has a minor <laughs> a major second or a major ninth however you want to call it so that would be 10 5 10 so it's 10 10 note distance between these two so if i go from top to bottom it would be a 10 note away minor uh, seven. If I go from bottom to top, therefore, two note away major second, which you can also call a two note away, uh, a two note away major nine. Okay, so that's so that's cool because I, I see that shape as a as a uh, minor seven, right? But if I again if I invert it two note away from bottom to top, that would be a two note away major. Uh, second okay so or nine <laughs> uh, all right so I could add this one in the middle and say all right well if I just do that I get on the bottom is the one and then the five and then the two note away major nine one five two note away major nine I then I could arpeggiate the, the three there kind of interesting all right what else do i got i've got a third that's way out here so that would be way out here and then i'm not going to be able to do that i can do that uh it's not easy that's definitely a stretchy that one in I don't know all right and then I've got a this one is much more doable over here it's an octave up but there's my third so I've got the, the so that makes sense so I've got that so that's nice and I can even add the fifth on top or below which is interesting I can add the fifth right there Maybe like that. And then I could try to bar this one down below. That's an interesting shape. I don't play that because it seems like, because then I can bar this down here. That's interesting. Very strange. So then I'm just. pull it up here now I'm adding now I'm adding the uh, F which is the seven well I can't really do that because I lost the. well I have the G on the bottom now but that's not what I'm doing I'm focusing on this G you can't get rid of the G that you're focused on for crying out loud I could just play it so I could do this uh, well okay I'm just I think that's it let's leave it at that for now I'm confusing myself what was I doing what is happening I don't know let's put let's go this way so now I'm focused on this G, and there's my five. So I could go up top. So now I've got the two note away, major nine, the one, and the five. And then of course I could bar this. 
which would give me another five. So now the nine, five, one, five. Maybe it'd be easier to do with this finger. If I get that C, that would be the 11. But I don't want to get, no, I don't want to get that. That's interesting. All right. Uh, let's move on. Moving on. I have a three down here. So then I could be like, boom, boom, boom. Is that right? Alright. And then I could try to even bar this. pick up the F right above it too. So like this. Hmm. Might have to play with that more. Certainly not throwing that in the mix much, I must say. All right, let's go to the next, let's go to the same string. So now I'm on the same string. And so I want a two note away uh, major second, otherwise known as a two note away major nine, even though I'm in a minor chord. So because the second is a minor, is a major second of the Aeolian or the, the ninth is a major nine. All right, so there's two notes away, boom, boom, obviously. So if I'm in the minor, I can kind of think of this like as if I'm on position one, right? Because if I was up here on the G, it would be position one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same, and then here's from G to G, octave up, same position here. So this is like almost like I'm on the top string with position one. One, two, three, four, five, six, but then moves up because of the kink of the tuning. Seven, eight. Right? So then I'm going to say, what do I have? I have a shuffle pattern. I mean, I can arpeggiate from here by going, by going one, nine, three, five, one. Or you can call it a two if I want to call it a two or a nine. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. So then I have, I've got a, uh, a three back here. So could I reach that? I've got, that's my normal third pattern here. So it would be one, three, a three down here but let's keep it at that let's go to the next one so it's next string down now I'm looking for two notes away below it so this would be five to here four three two two notes away so it's gonna go two notes away from pinky to pointer I have not reached the fault line yet pinky to pointer four 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 fret distance that's a two note that's a whole step two note away uh, major second or two note away major nine 
what else could I do with that? Well, I have a uh, five right here, which has been shifted up now because of the kink in the tuning. So if it, if it wasn't for the fact that we're down here, the relative position up top would have been right underneath. But now it's a step up. So I'd have to, so it's still pretty comfortable to get my finger there. So I don't do that much. It's a nice position. Totally doable. Can I do anything? I have an added finger here. Not much I can do with that. All right, so that's that. And then if I do that, I have that one. I also have a five up top. So I could grab that. So, and then behind that, I have my third. So this is kind of interesting because if I was playing like this shape would be my normal, my normal like lean back A minor a minor sh or G, G minor shape, which is part of this shape. But now I go right here. And then when I do that, of course I can lean back to here. So. And then I have the blues note. And then I have the open G. So that's a cool thing right there. I also have, I could also do it this way because normally the lean back from here, if I was doing my lean back shape on the A, one, three, five, and then here on the D, one, three, five, but then here it's one, three, and then this gets shifted up because I crossed the fault line. So it one, one, three, Wait a second. One, three, five. Here. So if I look at it that way, now I have this, I have this. One, three, five that I can play like that. And then I can drop. So I've got like, no, and this is the minor note. This is the blues note. And then I can drop that back to here, which is the 11. And then I can drop the third and add that. So that's interesting. cool and then let's go back here I've got a I can arpeggiate this one so I could go but I did the one above it I have a three here so then if I'm leaning back this way I've got boom 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 that three's been shifted up because of the kink in the tuning open finger here which I could not wait a sec is that right something's wrong here uh, this is going from here that's to the that's to the minor I need to reach back here and then now 
this is off. That's more of a stretch. But then I can shift this up to the to the minor, to the third, back to the nine. Huh. Anyway. All right. Moving on. Let's see what else we got. Uh, let's do the next one. So now we've crossed the fault line. Fault line's been crossed. The San Andreas fault line pushed this whole continent up to the right. So now we've got, I'm looking for a two note away. So it would be five and then 10 up this way because of the fault line. 10, 11, 12, 12 minus 12 brings it back to zero because that's the octave and then one, two. So if I think about it as like a circle, instead of going in octaves, there's my two note away on the 10. So right there. Cool. And then I can just throw a five in the mix right here. So that's interesting because if I have my normal minor shape, it would look like this. Like this is my D shape. It would be boom, it would be boom, 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 right? Boom, boom, boom. And then I could grab that G if I wanted to. So this would be like my D shape, which normally you might see it like that. But it's my lean forward shape from here, which you might just play this way and then mute this string. Or you can put your finger down here. And then if I have that, that G right there, I'm reaching out to here. And I could still grab my phone. All right, interesting. Is that doable? So I could be like... switch if I worked on it I think going from those two so I might have to play with that all right let's go to the last one here which is down below so that's I found it up top so it's going to be the same position on the bottom string because it's the same E string high and low E string 5 10 this would be 15 15 minus 12 it's 5 minus 2 which is 3 and then minus one uh, gives me two. So there's a two note away. So from here to here. All right, what can I do with that? I've got a, I've got a five behind it. So now I've got here, down to the three, here. Say wrong string. One, five, nine. Now I could pick up that three and get the three and the five, maybe. So I can lean back and go one. So that's kind of nice because this shape. So if I just look at this, this is a minor, a G minor, which is just part of my G shape up top like this, which I can break down to this 
or to this. So if I look at it from this perspective, then I can grab it with this one and go down and grab that, uh, that there. Now wait a second. Uh, yeah. So it can be like, I should do that more. All right, cool. Let's then let's go down to the next. Well, wait a sec. Is there anything? I have a a five over here. Let's not get let's not give up on it yet. And then I want to pick up this. I could bar this, but I'd need to pick up this one too. So that's that's cool because that's like here's my D shape again. So here's my normal D shape. My lean forward D minor shape would be here, here, and then here. I can do is I can once I have that I can lift up this finger letting go of the third to pick up the the A that's interesting I can also let go of this G and pick up the F, which is the seven. So if I was like, so now I'm muting. What I don't want to do is play out this E right here because that's out of the key. So right now I'm kind of muting it with my knuckle. And then I can pick up the seven here. And as I pick up the seven, I can put pressure on it to pick up the, the nine is two. Versus. Stop it there. I'm going to tell my joke now. It's the last day. I'm, I'm too late to, to, for the political joke. My joke, my jokes would have turned the election because they're so good. But in the United States, you got the presidential election. So, so, but whatever, dude. So here, <laughs> so here we go. It's my last practice joke. I had to string a few together because I, I put together the material and it's my last day to really uh, put them together, put the, because it's too late to, I mean, it might be old by tomorrow. So it might be a little bit longer on my practice joke. And if you don't, if, so if you want to skip it, you could skip it. Going to get some coffee here. All right. But here we go. My practice joke for the day, a little bit long, been a little bit taped together here. All right. It's crazy how the deep state is packed with such shallow people. You know, how is it? How is it the deep state is packed with such shallow people? Must make, it's got to take a lot of those shallow people to fill up the deep state, you know? And there's, there's a lot of deep state conspiracies about the Democratic Party. However, if there's one thing we can say about Kamala Harris's rhetoric, it's not deep, okay? It's, it's not deep. 
not deep not deep doesn't mean not dangerous but it's certainly it's certainly not deep okay May, maybe instead of worrying about the deep state we need to be more to, worried about like super 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 shallow state a super shallow state might be more of the that's the conspiracy we should be talking about you know when asked about kamala harris's off-putting laugh for campaign her campaign responded our strategy is based on the theory the squeaky wheel gets the grease and apparently the squeaky chipmunk gets put down poor peanut the lesson here is if if you're gonna be squeaky make sure that you're either a wheel or a politician not not a squirrel or a raccoon okay that's the squeaky rule and i you know what? I told a stupid joke and my producer, Phil, is, is telling me with disgust, why don't you act your age? Why don't you act your age? Can you believe that? That son of a... Phil wants me to die. What a jerk. What is this? It's, it's like Kamala Harris campaign talking to Joe Biden. Act your age, Joe. That's not nice. It's not a nice thing to... Anyways, the news keeps talking about this political capital. You know, isn't the political capital in Washington, Washington, D.C.? I mean, I, I feel like everybody already knows where the political capital is. You need to stop telling, stop telling us like we're stupid about political capital. We already know that. You know, the Harris campaign is touting their high national security. They have high national security policies. But isn't it strange how she never goes on record about which nations she's securing. You know, by national security, we mean us. We mean this nation, dang it. We want to we wanna be the ones that are secure. <laughs> you know, Kamala Harris has been criticized for her massive flip-flops. She's got massive flip-flops. But I, but I think this is actually the mainstream of sewage media just covering for her. Because her usual performance is more of a flop flop you know flip flop would be a vast overstatement that would be a vast improvement you know Ka kamala harris wants to mandate wants a mandate from the people kamala harris wants a political mandate from the people and a, and a mandate is going to be quite difficult considering she hates men you see what i did there she can't you can't you can't have a you can't get a mandate you can't have a mandate without a man in it and they clearly hate, they hate men. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. Those are my last political jokes. That doesn't mean I'm not going to keep doing political jokes later because I'm kind of in the, that's kind of like I've been doing that for a while, so I might have more. But that's all I've, that's basically all I've got here. The wad has been shot. <laughs> all right. So let's see what else we got. We're on uh, the last one. Uh, an A. So let's go to the... No, no, no. I'm on uh, a C now. Let's go to this one. Okay. Middle string. Alright, so we're on the C now. So I'm going to go above it again. So if I go above it, then we, we're, we notice above it we haven't hit the fault line yet. Below it, right below it, we have hit the fault line. And then we have a new string, of course, up top, which is going to have a different uh, shape than we've seen thus far. All right, so we're going to go right above it. So we're looking for the inverse when we go above it. So if we're looking for a two note away uh, major second, which is also two note away uh, major nine, the inverse is 12 minus two, which is 10 notes away. Counting that out, that would be five six seven eight nine ten so it'd be back here same uh relationship we saw before it would be way back not really reachable so i see it out there not going to do much with it let's go to the one above that so now we've got this one and i'm looking for a 10 note distance so this would be five ten on the two strings so that would be a if i look from the top to the bottom same kind of shape that we saw before which would be a what I, you might recognize that as a 10 note away minor seven the inverse therefore from bottom to top is a two note away major second which is what we're looking for 
All right, what can we do with that? Well, I have, then I could just fill in that middle bit and we've got that relative position right there. And maybe I can play that with like one finger. Looks like an A, but it's not because it's not, it's not down here, it's up, it's up a string. So bottom to top would be one, five, and two note away uh, major second or two note away major nine. And then I'm trying not to play the string below that one. I'm trying to pick this one up, but not this one. I want, so it's kind of difficult. I want to get that C, but not the one below it. If that's too hard, I can play it kind of like an A shape, like that, but it's moved up and then mute the strings underneath it with my other finger. That works good on the higher register, on like down towards the, the this side of the guitar, but not so much on the higher side uh, pitch wise of the guitar. I could then bar this bit off right here, which is kind of interesting. So I could pull in the top note is a 13. Oh, that's tensiony. 13. If I don't want that 13 up top, maybe I want it at the bottom end. So now I mute that bit. So so there's gonna be I mute that bit and I try to trying to get that third in there mainly. Or I can just pick the third, which is right there. That's an interesting shape. I don't do that much. I wonder why I don't do that much. So what is that? That's like a... Okay, let's think about this. Because the G shape would be like this. G minor. Which is this. But I can play like this. And now I'm saying I add that D on top of it. And then, so that would be like, I could play this full bar chord. This would be, this would be a G minor. But no, I'm looking at a, what am I doing? I'm totally, I'm still on the G. I'm thinking of myself in the key of G now. So this would be a C, I'm on the C. I totally, sorry about that. I went stupid there for a second. I'm on C minor. And then I can add that, and then I add this one on top. C minor would be an A-shaped minor chord. And then I can add this on top and then still pick up that third. It's funny, I don't normally do that, but it sounds cool. Like, why wouldn't I do that? Is there any way I can just... The easy way to shift that maybe is to play this one. Now I've got the C up top, and then I just move this to here. It's hard, and then try to see if I could still keep this finger down for the third. If I lose the third, that's okay. I can, but I'd like to. So I could, that might be neat. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I have 
a, a third that I was just messing with already down here. I have a third back here, which is per, kind of a stretch. So if I'm on this C, I've got this third on the one. So that's quite a stretch, but kind of doable. Wait a sec. I'm on. Alright. And then I have a fifth up here that I was kind of noodling around with already, I think. So if this is my my one so now it's the five nine one five nine one all right let's move on let's go to the top string go up here so that would be 5, 10, 15, bring it down, 15 minus 12 is 5, minus 3 uh, is 5 minus 2, which is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and that doesn't work. 5, 10, 15, 14, 13, uh, 12, 11, 10. All right, so here's the new string. We haven't seen this one yet out to here. That's quite a stretch. Is there anything I could pick up in the middle from doing that? I could pick up maybe like the G right above it with a little bar. Which is not easy to do. Maybe I can't do that. It's pretty difficult. So I'll say, okay, I see you there. And then I can go, okay, let's do this string on the same string. It's going to be just two notes away. So there we have it. Boom, boom. And then, uh, so if I wanted to arpeggiate that, I can say this is the one where it looks kind of like position one. So if I was on position one on like this C up top, it would be our normal shape one, two, for C minor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing here. But now, one, two, three, and then it shifts up four, because of the kink in the tuning. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so that means that if I'm here, I, ha I have the one, three, five, two, or I can do it this way. Wait, I'm on the wrong string again, dang it. One, two, three, five, one, two, three, five. Or one, three, five, two, or nine. One, three, five, well, one, three, five, two, or nine. One, three, five, two, or nine. All right, so I have that. I have a, a third down here. It's a minor third down here. Looks like a major third, but no, it's a minor because of the fault line. So between these, I've got one, three, and then the five is a stretch. Five. The five is a, is a longer stretch because of the fault line. So the easy, it's easier down here with the three because it got pulled in, and, but it's harder down to reach up to that five because it got pushed out. One, two, one, three, five. One, three, five. All right, let's go below it. So if I go below it, now we're crossing the fault line. So the difference between these two strings got pushed up so when I was looking at the G, it would have been back here, but now it's been pushed up one because of the fault line. So it looks like it's a minor, th it looks like it's a three note away minor th third. I mean, it looks like it's a, yeah, a minor third, but it's not. It's, it's a uh, two note away uh, major second or nine. All right. So, so what can I do with that? Well, now I've got a five right below it. So I've, I can bar that. Go. 
So that's nice. Uh, okay. So, so normally I would have this shape with that three right there. So how can I work that in? So this would be my normal shape, which is part of this shape, right? So I have this minor shape, C minor, A shape. And then I can play part of that like this, which converts to just this. And then I can make, I can drop the three and pick up the nine by doing this. play with that one below it which is the 13. So then I have, uh, let's leave it at that. I have a, well, I have a, a third up top here. I have a third up here. And then my, so it's, now to do that, I might be able to pick up both of these. in there okay and then all right let's do the last one I think I'm really kind of getting a little fatigued here <laughs> this would be 5 uh, 10 11 12 bringing it back to 0 1 2 so from here to 5 6 7 8 need to act my age and go to bed. I've heard not too much I can do with that. All right, that's basically it. I was going to mess with, like, if I picked a numbering system again, like, and I just picked, these are all the combinations of three notes, and if I think of these as relative positions, I can kind of pick randomly because again I was kind of thinking to think in my mind a little bit more systematically about switching from like A minor to like uh, the related the related minor maybe I should do it over here so I was going to be thinking more systematically like going from the minor to the Locrian you know and the different modes 
and try to try to do that by hide listing out all of the three chord combinations uh, we can have. So if I was going to build a song, just have three chords, I just list out all the combinations so I can more easily just kind of pick them instead of trying to think in my mind, well, what are the three chords or whatever I'm going to play. So I'm just going to randomly say, okay, what about a one, two, five? Now, from the perspective of a minor, what does that mean? It means I'm going to play the A, and if it's in the relative position one, one, two, five, here, and then copy and paste here. I don't want to play. Let's not play a two. That's where the low green is. Let's leave the low green out of this for a second. Maybe we'll go back to that later. Let's play the one, one, three, four. Let's do that one. So let's go, we say the one and then the three and then the four. Okay. So what does that mean? I, I, the one is a minor and I, I can, obviously I'm in the minor scale. So I know that the three is a major chord. How would I know that? Because well, one way I know it is because the one, four, five of the minor are minor chords. That means, and the two is the Locrian. So the three, six, seven are the majors. I can also compare it to the major chords, which are the numbering system here that I have for, uh, for modes. Meaning if I know that the Aeolian that I'm in, the minor scale is the sixth of the major, six minus one gives me five, five steps, steps from the one of the major plus three, five, six, seven, eight. There's only seven modes. Eight minus one is one. So it would be the first of the relative major. And I know that the one, four, five are major chords with regards to the major scale. I also know it's the Ionian mode. And then the four, what do I do with that? Well, I know that the one, four, five on the minor keys are like the blues progression. Therefore, I know it's minor. But if I didn't know that, I can compare it to the major by saying I'm in Aeolian, which is the sixth mode, because it's the minor scale, six minus one is five steps away from the one of the major scale, plus four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, minus seven, because there's only seven uh, notes or modes. So uh, seven, nine minus seven uh, is two, which gives me the second of the relative major. And I know that the two, three, and six build minor chords uh, and I also can say it's the second mode. So that tells me that I'm going to, I'm going to be playing an A, which would be a minor, right? And a C, which would be a major. And then a uh, D would be Dorian. I mean, a D would be minor. Now I could go to, I could go from an A, like if I went beyond just the three notes of a triad, I could go from an A minor to a C major and then play all the notes in a C major scale if I wanted to, uh, or, and then go to the D Dorian. But that's gonna give me a different kind of sound than if I stay in the same key, which will have the same triad of a minor, major, minor, but it has a different interval than the related major scales because uh, the Ionian, well, the Ionian, will have the same intervals as the Ionian because it's the major scale, but the Dorian will have one different interval than the related Aeolian D uh, scale. Okay, so, 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 then I'm, so then I've been thinking, well, if I play like a progression like this, how long can I hang on uh, to like, like the C major or the Dorian before I switch my ear switches to say, hey, look, I'm not an A minor anymore. I feel like I'm in uh, C. Uh, major or Dorian. So let's just noodle around with that. If so I'm like, if I was on like an A minor, C major, D minor. Now I'm going to start calling them instead of A minor, C major, and D minor, I'm going to call it A, Aeolian, or minor, A minor, C major, or Ionian. And the only one that's different is the D. Dorian, which I could call D minor if I'm only looking at the triad, but I'm thinking of it as Dorian, which means that if I go beyond the triad, then I'm going to be in Dorian, which means all 
all the notes will still be in the same related A minor key, which is what I'm, what I'm focusing. I'm thinking of myself as being in, in, in total. A minor. C major. D minor. A minor. Let's noodle around. I'm just noodling in A minor. Which means I'm just going to kind of try to keep the A. I'm just going to keep on going back to the A minor. Even though I'm noodling around all over the place. So it sounds pretty much A minor-y. I'm going to go to the C major and make it sound more like a shuffle pa pattern. So this would be a, a bluesy shuffle pattern. Back to the minor. C major that often you might notice but for some reason I don't know why and then A minor try to hang on each of them a little bit longer so it does so it sounds like I'm almost switching keys to a different mode A minor
I don't know. I'm a little tired. Let's stop it there.